My name is Dylan Robertson, and I'm the 2015 Michelle Lang Fellow. For the past year, I've been looking at homegrown terrorism as a social issue. I've been looking at radicalization, how it happens, and how to prevent it. Last summer, I was working here at the Herald, where we had a group of people that were revealed to have gone and joined ISIL. And it was really this shocking thing, and you talk to people and they say, I don't know how this happened, and we never really get to the how and the why. I really wanted to look into this and see what was going on. And what I found after a year was that this is a huge issue. This is affecting a lot of people, and it speaks to a lot of problems that we have in society. Michelle Ling was killed in Afghanistan in 2009 while she was reporting there. Last summer, I went to go visit her parents after I got the fellowship. It was around the weekend that James Foley was beheaded, and it was in the papers on their coffee table when I went to go talk to them. They wanted to know, why is this happening? They were asking what everyone was asking. How do Canadians end up involved in this sort of thing? To me, it's a real honor to carry her name for this year. And of course, she wanted to know the same things. Why does this happen? How can you stop it? Canada has a prevention strategy for radicalization, but there's problems with that strategy. There's an intervention program that's been delayed. Communities don't know how to spot these signs and families that are affected by it don't know who to turn to. The story that stood out to me the most was Wayne Driver. He lives in Cold Lake, Alberta. He's helped with the anti-ISIS mission, training some of the pilots. He found out last year that his son was posting support for terror groups. He was devastated, and he didn't know what to do about it. He doesn't have a lot of support. His son was calling on attacks, supporting attacks against the military. It's interesting to me because this is a military family. Almost anyone can be affected by radicalization. The second part of why Wayne's story was so interesting is because we know that there's 318 people involved in terrorism investigations in Canada, but there's so many more. There's families. There's people who are thinking about this. There's people supporting terror groups. There's people who are questioned as a result. This affects hundreds of people in Canada, and we only get to hear a few of their stories. The thing that surprised me the most was how consistent the signs were in a lot of these cases. In retrospect, people are able to say he was radicalized, he was going down that path, but they didn't know how to spot the signs. There needs to be more education so that people know what are the signs, how do you spot it, and who can you call to get involved.